You may know him from <laughs> Arrested Development <laughs> really or okay, A Mighty Wind or the long running hospital drama right. Saint I'm Elsewhere. Okay, like so that. many television and right. movie projects. You are big. Ed Begley Jr. has a new book out that's called To the Temple of Tranquility. Uh, and uh, Step on It, a <laughs> memoir. Ed Beckley Jr. joins us in studio. It's so nice to have you. Thank you for coming in. Dean, it's good to talk to you again. Good morning. I wanted to talk about your career and all the things that you've done, but we can't do any of that because of the uh, actor strike that's going we on. We can talk generally. I don't know how I'm still fooling him at age 74. <laughs> I've been working since 1967 and the phone still rings. It's kind of crazy. Well, yeah. uh, you know, for, fortunately, there's no shortage of things to talk to you about. Uh, that you talk about in your book. What I found uh, so interesting were some of the encounters that you've had uh, through the years. The one that jumped out at me was uh, your encounter with Marlon Brando. He was a dear friend. I got to know him through a wonderful actress, Helena Calignotes. She was in Five Easy Pieces and other movies and great actress, a great friend. One day she said, Marlon wants to talk to you. Marlon Brando wants to talk to you. <laughs> And I started talking to him, and I quickly surmised what he didn't want to talk about. Acting, writing, directing, puppetry, claymation, train sales, <laughs> anything to do with show business. Okay. He didn't want to talk about solar panels, wind uh -huh. turbines, drywall, copper pipe versus steel galvanized. <laughs> All this stuff, you know, is very interesting. So I kept getting invited back because I knew the rules. Then one day he called me up and said, I want to talk to you about electric eels. What? Oh, you want to power every home wow. in America with electric eels. Yeah. I thought he was winding me up. He was serious. <laughs> well, that's one of my favorite chapters in the book, Marlin and the electric eels. You'll love it. That sounds like an episode of The Simpsons or something. I know. It's great. <laughs> Which you've been on, well, by the enthusiasm And Simpsons. Uh, let me tell you something. Working with Meryl Streep and Jack Nicholson, my kids thought, wow, my dad works as an actor. But when I was on The Simpsons, they went, my yeah. dad's a star. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Isn't and that great? You know what's so interesting is, like, your name is so synonymous with environmental causes that it, it literally, from, you were the first person that I can even think of yep. even bringing this up way back, and that's why it's become. 1970, yes. yeah. I got my first electric car in 1970, started recycling, composting, became a vegetarian. And here's the good news, not because of me, because of many other wonderful people doing things. We have four times the cars in L.A. from 1970, millions more people but a fraction of the smog. We've cleaned it up to a large, large extent. Now, there's still people near the ports of Long Beach and Los Angeles that need some relief yeah. from the smog there locally yeah. near the fulfillment centers. We're going to help them, too. But we've proven we can do it. Cleaner cars, cleaner power yeah. plants. We can do this. Mm -hmm. I, I look at the stories in this book, and I just, I, I just pictured John Lovitz telling these stories because they sound made up, like you smoked weed with, with Charles Manson. Yeah. I know. Like, how did that come about? I went with my friend James Duramias to visit his friend David Curlin. He lived in a tree house near a saloon. <laughs> Of course he did. I know, of course he did. So we went, we smoked a joint together. That's what you did in 1968. That was the year. Went up with a bunch of hippies and shared a joint with them. One of them asked about, he needed to help with his music or what have you. Went back to the car, parked near the saloon. I should mention, it's not a real saloon. It was part of a, a ranch called the Spawn Ranch, oh, a yeah. movie set. So that was, of course, Charles Manson yeah. that we smoked a joint with. We didn't know that till a year later. <laughs> right. We knew them by first name, maybe, if we even knew that, meeting yeah. them. Yeah. But a year later, we saw them in the paper having done this horrible, oh, horrible yeah. act. Wow. Wow. Was, and then uh, John Belushi told you to stop drinking. 100%. <laughs> John was known for many things, and I hope we focus on his great work yeah. as a comedian. I know things that happened later in his life. We all know that, but he was a great comedian. And for me, my salvation, he and Judy took me out of the bar in Durango, Mexico. We were down there filming and said, you got to see some of the city. You're, you're headed towards disaster. And John was a great and wonderful influence on my life. So was Judy. I love them both. Wow. Wow. Now you're going to be doing a, a night with your friend Bob Balaban at the uh, First United Methodist Church Chicago Temple tomorrow. Uh, you're going to be interviewing him. That's going to be fascinating, I think. Are, are you looking forward to it? Looking forward. He's a great star in all those Christopher Guest movies, yeah. Waiting for Guffman and all of them. I wasn't in oh. that classic one, but I was in the others. So Bob is a dear friend. He's a wonderful director, wonderful actor. I've seen the movies my whole life, so I can't wait to work with Bob again on stage. Uh, you know, we're on strike now, so we can't work in front of a camera, but we'll be together on stage tomorrow night at that uh, Methodist church there. 
and uh, it's going to be a great time. He's great to talk to, a great conversationalist. I, I think I know why you have so many great stories. I mean, I just met you, but you seem like a cool, like a fun guy to hang around with. You're just so easy to talk to. Is that You're what very you, kind. Do you make a lot of friends? I mean, you just keep friendships through I the I have years? a lot of good yeah. friends, and I talk about them in the book. A great influence on me was the actor Bruno Kirby. Oh, Tremendous yeah. influence, and he got me back into studying act again when I needed to do it, and lots of other good friends, you know that have helped me immeasurably over the years. And Chris Guest is one of the major ones. Before that, I was in movie jail for a few years from all the, I did some <laughs> movies that didn't do very well at yeah. the box office. And so I was in Three Strikes movie jail in Hollywood. <laughs> But Chris bailed me out with Best in Show. I've been working in movies ever since. Oh, my so God. I owe a great deal to the wonderful Chris Guest. Yeah, yeah those have been fantastic. We have a, a picture of you uh, with Cesar Chavez. I mean, that, this is the range of people uh, that you know. We, you were uh, one of his pallbearers? I was. He was a dear friend. We worked on pesticide issues together. You know, I'm an environmentalist. People know that. But the people that are being affected the most by these pesticides and fungicides and herbicides, the people that were working in the fields, sometimes they go overhead with a plane and spray in the fields when people were working there. Yeah. So I helped Cesar Chavez with that, and I had the sadness and the honor of carrying his coffin through the streets of Delano when he passed. Mm. Great man. Yeah. Uh, we have some pictures uh, from you as, as a kid. Let's take a look at those together, and I'm just... Uh, I think it's you and your sister. We have some pictures. Uh, let's see if we can pull those up. Yes. Wow. That's, you. Oh, that's, 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 that's another reason I became an environmentalist. I got to see nature up close and personal as a Boy Scout, and I knew it was worth protecting. So, It's interesting that, uh, oh, who is this? My dad and my sister Aileen, my wonderful role model in life. I dedicate the book to Bruno Kirby, to her, and to Jeanette Pierre, a woman that was like a mother that raised us age 7 to age 12 in my life. A wonderful woman, Jeanette. So my sister there That's is so a big cool. deal for me. Yeah. You talk about having you know, some, some movies maybe that didn't do so well, and I get the impression that there are a lot of actors who their whole identity is wrapped up in being an actor and on film, and it sounds like you, that is not the case for you. I have always had more than one string to my bow, which is the way my dad said it. You know, don't, don't just be an actor, do other things. So, you know, and he, w I went to visit where he worked at the wire mole plant in Hartford. I went, this is what a, uh, an actor does when he's trying to get acting work, work at a factory. That's exactly what an actor does. Wait yeah. tables, work at a factory. In my case, I did carpentry. Nothing like Harrison Ford. He's a real master carpenter. Yeah. But I was pretty good and did, did some work for a while and built a table for Helena Calignotes that I mentioned earlier. Yeah. That's how I got up to Marlins. But all these stories, I feel like Zelig, that movie Zelig. You know, what's he doing there at Yalta, this guy? Yeah. Why is he there? Or Forrest Gump, more yeah. likely. Or Chauncey Gardner. You know, yeah. I'm running past her, involved yeah. in all these historical like, events. Like you've been digitally inserted into yeah. all of these bizarre... Yeah. How Why didn't you write that screenplay? Huh? Oh. The Ed Begley story. That's right. It is a screenplay. Can I ask what Marlon Brando said when you said, don't think the electric eels are going to work? <laughs> I said, why is everything no with you? Why is everything? <laughs> you're so negative. I don't know why you're so negative. <laughs> negative, yeah, negative and positive. You're not going to get any electricity from the anode or the cathode. He wanted to put an anode or a cathode in a, in a pond filled, filled with eels. He thought he was going to get current out of it. Marlon, Marlon. Wow. <laughs> You, you, can, you can imagine how this night's going to be. You can catch Ed in conversation <laughs> with Bob Alvin and on acting activism and a greener future this tomorrow, 4 p.m. at the First United Methodist Church at the Chicago Temple on West Washington Street. And the book is To the Temple of Tranquility and Step on It. The stories just go on and on. Ed, it's such a pleasure to meet you. That's great. Robin, likewise. <laughs> Thank you. And Dean, my old friend. Good yeah, to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate Thank you. it. Tom.